special update on the latest on Clinton email developments. Uh, also a big day today at Judicial Watch. Our new book is being published. And uh, some major Benghazi developments, too, as it relates to uh, Hillary Clinton. Uh, before, I get that, before I get you to the details on that, you got to buy the book. It's coming out today. It's already a bestseller on Barnes & Noble and Amazon. Let's make it number one in both sites. It's Clean House, Exposing Our Government's Secrets and Lies. It's a great book. It gives you the background on Clinton emails. It gives you the background on election integrity, on Benghazi, on the IRS, and its details all in one place that you won't find anywhere else. And it also shows you a way forward. And what I thought was really great about our book is that as we were working on it, the elections didn't really come up in them. It really doesn't matter. We need to clean out clean house no matter who's elected. And this shows the way forward through transparency, accountability, and respect for the rule of law and uh, taking on government corruption. So uh, again, the book is released today. It should be a New York Times bestseller. And when you buy the book, you end up supporting Judicial Watch indirectly, and you're also telling the establishment, this is your concern, cleaning house and making sure Washington is doing what it's supposed to do on behalf of the American people, as opposed to what it typically do does, which is uh, basically use your tax dollars to uh, take care of um, people who don't deserve it. Uh, along those lines, we had these major issues with the Clinton Foundation come up over the last week, the Prince of Bahrain, we are, the Prince of Bahrain, the Crown Prince of Bahrain was using Clinton Foundation to get a meeting, and that just led to another whole uh, 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 round of criticism of Mrs. Clinton, and it led today to a New York Times story or editorial calling on the Clintons to uh, pull out of the foundation completely, so major developments. But the, um, the other major issue, it's been a crazy day here because we were in court earlier this morning. Uh, over Benghazi emails, believe it or not. So remember, Mrs. Clinton only turned over half of the emails she took with her at the State Department and supposedly deleted the rest. And the FBI criminal investigation uncovered some of those deleted emails and emails she otherwise didn't turn over. And that batch of emails, which we now know thanks to our litigation, is 14,900. And so now the government has to search those emails in response to our requests, including our request for Benghazi emails and documents that Mrs. Clinton has. And they came back to us last week and told us they got some hits in response to the search. Now, they didn't want to tell us how many documents they received. Well, the court in our case, uh, they wanted to return them over to us on September 30th, and we're like, well, tell us how many documents. How long does it take you to turn over these records? It depends how many there are. They wouldn't tell us, but they told us today they found 30 emails, uh, Benghazi-related emails, and these emails Mrs. Clinton hadn't turned over, and they want a full month to turn them over. Well, I don't think the court was going to have it, and he told the government to come back within a week with a production schedule. So we'll be getting those Benghazi emails soon, but there are at least 30 emails that are potentially responsive on Benghazi, and we're going to get some of them at least by September 30th, if not sooner. But to go into court and see these government lawyers, there are three government lawyers for their side, go into court and finally admit, well, there are only 30 records and they need a full month, an email a day to review them, is just uh, the epitome of why we're in the situation we're in with respect to the Clinton email system. She's deleting emails, hiding them from the American people on Benghazi, it turns out. And the State Department gets them back in July, and it's uh, a month later, and they find 30 Benghazi emails, and they say they need another month to even think about releasing them. It's just crazy. And thankfully, the courts, appointees of all administrations, the Reagan, the Clinton, and even President Obama, uh, are not really, um, are losing patience and accelerating the release of the records. It's not perfect, but we're getting more information. Other big news today. We sent today 25 questions that Mrs. Clinton has to answer under oath. We sent them over to her lawyer today. Now, you may recall before Judge Sullivan, in another one of our Freedom of Information Act cases, authorized us discovery. And we got limited discovery, and then we came back and said, we want Mrs. Clinton's, email, uh, Mrs. Clinton's testimony now. Now, unfortunately, the judge didn't give us her direct testimony, but he did say, we could submit interrogatories, which are questions that have to be responded to under oath. And she has 30 days to respond. 
And we're limited under the rules, uh, the lawyers tell me, to 25 questions. And I thought, I talked to my colleagues here, I said, let's just read these questions to the American people so they know what we're asking of Mrs. Clinton. And you're going to see they're not terribly legalistic. They're very straightforward. They're straightforward, simple questions that Mrs. Clinton should answer in a straightforward, simple way, we hope, finally. And again, she has 30 days to respond, and we should get these answers by uh, 30 days. It's about August 30th or 29th, so we should be getting them by September 29th. So here's question number one. Again, these are questions that Mrs. Clinton, thanks to a court order, are obligated to answer under oath in written format. Remember, she didn't want to answer any additional questions, uh, so these 25 um, are something that she's not going to have to do or answer voluntarily. So let me use my glasses here so I can get a better view. Describe, number one, describe the creation of the Clinton email system, including who decided to create the system, the date it was decided to create the system, why it was created, who set it up, and when it became operational. A key question we don't have the answer to. Describe the creation of your ClintonEmail.com account, uh, including who decided to create it, when it was created, why it was created, and if you did not set up the account, who set it up for you. I may edit a few of these questions as I read them, but they're, they're in full uh, on our internet site at judicialwatch.org, and maybe we'll post a link uh, as we talk about it on Facebook Live. Uh, Facebook Live, excuse me. Uh, number three, when did you decide to use a ClintonEmail.com account, a ClintonEmail.com email account to conduct official State Department business, and whom did you, did you consult in making this decision? Number four, identify all communications in which you participated concerning or relating to your decision to use uh, the email account to conduct official government uh, business, and for each communication, we want the details, time, date, and place. Five, in a 60 Minutes interview from July, you stated that it was recommended you use a personal email account to conduct official State Department business. What recommendations were you given about using or not using a personal email account to conduct official State Department business, who made any such recommendations, and were and when were they made to you? Number six, were you ever advised, cautioned, or warned? Was it ever suggested, or did you ever participate in any communication, conversation, or meeting in which it was discussed that your use of a ClintonEmail.com email account to conduct official State Department business conflicted with or violated federal record-keeping laws? And we want the details of any of those meetings or conversations that took place. We want to know what the content of those discussions were. Number seven, your campaign website says, when Clinton got to the department, she opted to use her personal email account as a matter of convenience. What factors other than convenience did you consider in deciding to use a personal email account to conduct official State Department business? And include in your answer whether you considered federal records management and preservation requirements and how email you use to conduct official State Department business would be searched in response to FOIA requests. Number eight, after President Obama nominated you to be Secretary of State and during your tenure as Secretary, did you expect the State Department to receive FOIA requests for, uh, for and concerning your email? Number nine, during your tenure as Secretary of State, did you understand that email you sent or received in the course of conducting State Department business was subject to FOIA? And during your tenure as Secretary of State, how did you manage and preserve emails in your ClintonEmail.com email account sent or received in the course of conducting official State Department business? And what, if anything, did you do to make those emails available to the department for conducting searches in response to FOIA requests? Again, if you're just joining us, I'm reading the questions that Judicial Watch is submitting to Mrs. Clinton that she has to respond to under oath within 30 days by September 29th. And these are 25 questions. I just finished the first 10. Number 11, during your tenure as Secretary of State, what, if any, effort did you make to inform the State Department's record management personnel about your use of a ClintonEmail.com email account to conduct official government business? During your tenure as Secretary of State, did that State Department personnel ever request access to your ClintonEmail.com account to search for email responsive to a FOIA request. If so, identify the date access to your account you requested, was requested, the person or persons requesting access, and whether access was granted or denied. We want to know if her FOIA account was, if her account was ever searched pursuant to FOIA, and if not, why not? At the time you decided to use your ClintonEmail.com account, 
to conduct official State Department business or at any time thereafter during your tenure as Secretary of State. Because there is a little bit of legalese. Did you consider how many emails you sent to or received from persons who did not have State Department email accounts, meaning state.gov account, would be maintained and preserved by department or searched by the department in response to FOIA requests? If so, what was your understanding about how such emails would be maintained, preserved, or searched by the department in response to FOIA requests? What does that mean? When you send emails outside the State Department, how did you think FOIA was going to capture them? On March 6, 2009, Se Assistant Secretary of State for Diplomatic Security Eric Boswell wrote in an information memo to your Chief of Staff Cheryl Mills that he cannot stress too strong that quote he cannot stress too strongly, however, that any unclassified BlackBerry is highly vulnerable in any setting to remotely and covertly monitoring conversations, retrieving email, and exploiting calendars. And that was document we recovered through our investigation and litigation. A March 11, 2000 email states that in a management meeting with the Assistant Secretaries, you approached uh, Boswell and mentioned you had read the message and that you get it. Did you review the March 2009 memorandum, information memo? And so why did you continue using an unclassified BlackBerry to access your ClintonEmail.com account to conduct official State Department business? And we, in case she needed it, we provided her copies of that document. You can look at the document, too, online at judicialwatch.org. Question 15. In a November 13, 2010 email exchange with Yuma Abedin about problems with the ClintonEmail.com email account, you wrote to Ms. Abedin in response to her suggestion that you use a State Department email account or release your email address to the department. Let's get a separate address or device. Why did you continue using your ClintonEmail.com account after agreeing to get that separate address or device? And including in your answer, uh, whether including your answer whether by address you meant an official State Department email account, meaning like a state.gov account, and by device you meant a State Department issued BlackBerry. And again, we submit the email for her review. And then the question number sixteen. And he's a little bit longer, but the background's important here. And this is information that you're not going to find easily available anywhere else but for on our Judicial Watch website and through questions like these. So I think there's a high value educationally to letting you know about this and getting the word out about this hopefully by you sharing this video and uh, the materials associated with it. Email exchanges among your top aides and assistants in August uh, from August 30th 2011 discussed providing you with a State Department issued BlackBerry or State Department email address. In the course of these discussions, State Department Executive Secretary Stephen Mull, Executive Secretary meant who was the top administrator at the, at, the, at the department for her, wrote, we're working to provide the secretary per her request a department issue BlackBerry to replace her personal unit, which is malfunctioning, possibly because her personal email server is down. We will prepare two versions for her to use, one with an operating State Department email account, which would mask her identity, but which would be also subject to FOIA requests. Again, that was a document we uncovered. Um, similarly, John Bentel, who, by the way, we will be able to question thanks to Judge Sullivan's order, so we will be deposing him in off under oath. The Director of Information and Records Management in the Executive Secretariat wrote, you should be aware that any email would go through the department's infrastructure and be subject to FOIA searches. Did you request a State Department issue BlackBerry or State Department email account in or around August 2011? And if so, why did you continue to use your personal device and ClintonEmail.com account to conduct official State Department business instead of replacing your device and account with a State Department issue BlackBerry or a State Department email account? And including your answer was the fact that a State Department issue BlackBerry or State Department email address would be subject to FOIA, meaning disclosure, affected your decision. And of course, we provide copies of those emails for Mrs. Clinton to review so she can answer this question under oath. So that was 16. Now it's 17. In February 2011, Assistant Secretary Boswell sent you an information memo noting a dramatic increase since January 2011 in attempts to compromise the private email accounts of senior State Department officials. Boswell urged department users to minimize the use of personal web email for business. Did you review Boswell's information memo 
And if so, why did you continue to use your ClintonEmail.com account to conduct official State Department business, including your step answer any steps you took to minimize your use of your ClintonEmail.com email account after reviewing the memo? And again, to be helpful, we included the memo with Mrs. Clinton. Uh, with this document for Mrs. Clinton's review. Number 18, on June 28, 2011, you sent a message to all State Department and personnel about securing personal email accounts. I love this question. In the message, you noted recent targeting of personal email accounts by online adversaries and directed all personnel to, quote, avoid conducting official department business from your personal email accounts. Can you believe she sent that email and continued to use her email? separately on her own server. Why did you continue using your ClintonEmail.com email account to conduct official State Department business after June 28, 2011, when you were advising all State Department to personnel to avoid doing so? And again, we provided her a copy of that email for her review so she could answer this question under oath as the court requires. Number 19, were you ever advised, cautioned, or warned about hacking or attempted hacking of your ClintonEmail.com email account or the server that hosted your account? And if so, what did you do in response to the advice, caution, and warning? When you were preparing to leave office, did you consider allowing the State Department access to your ClintonEmail.com email account to manage and preserve the official emails in your account and to search those emails in response to FOIA requests? If you considered allowing access to your email account, why did you decide against it if you did not consider allowing access to your email account, why not? After you left office, did you believe you could alter, destroy, disclose, or use email you sent or received concerning official State Department business as you saw fit? If not, why not? In late 2014, the State Department asked that you make available to the Department copies of any thorough records of which you were aware such as an email sent or received or on a personal email account while serving as Secretary of State. After you left office, but before your attorneys reviewed the email in your ClintonEmail.email account in response to the State Department's request, did you alter, destroy, disclose, or use any of the email in the account or authorize or instruct that any email in the account be altered, destroyed, disclosed, or used? Now, this is an important question. If so, describe any email that was altered, destroyed, disclosed, or used when the alteration, destruction, disclosure, or use took place and the circumstances under which the email was altered, destroyed, or used. And the letter asking for those emails that we reference is attached. An important, important question. Three more questions that we submitted to Mrs. Clinton under oath, or that she'll have to respond to under oath within a month. September 29th, again, is the date these questions, or these answers are due under oath per a court order. 23. After your lawyers completed their review of the emails in your ClintonEmail.com email account in late 2014, were the electronic versions of your emails preserved, deleted, or destroyed? If they were deleted or destroyed, what tool or software was used to delete or destroy them? Who deleted or destroyed them? And was the deletion or destruction done in your direction? That's, that's going to be an interesting answer. 24. During your October 22, 2015 appearance before the U.S. House of Representatives Select Committee on Benghazi, you testified that 90, 90 to 95% of your emails were in the state's system, and if they wanted to see them, they certainly would have been able to do so. Identify the basis for this statement, including all facts in which you relied on in support of the statement, how and when you became aware of these facts, and if you, made aware, if you were made aware of these facts or by through another person, Identify the person who made you aware of these facts. Well, you can imagine we want to know that detail there. And number 25, this is the final question. Identify all communications between you and Brian Pagliano concerning or relating to the management, preservation, deletion, or destruction of any emails in your ClintonEmail.com email account, including any instruction or direction to Pagliano about the management, preservation, Deletion or destruction of emails in your account when transferring the ClintonEmail.com email system to any alternate or replacement server. And obviously we want the details of those communications. So there you have it. Those are the 25 questions that we submitted today. Our attorneys worked long and hard on them to Mrs. Clinton, her lawyer. She has, per federal court order, 
29, oh, 30 days to respond. I, I'm thinking 29 because it's due on September 29. So she has to answer these questions, these 25 questions under oath. Uh, if you couldn't follow what I was reading, it was a long read, I understand. They're available online at judicialwatch.org. Uh, again, uh, the other headline now is there are Benghazi emails they found. They want 30 days to turn them over. The State Department does, and these were emails uh, among the deleted emails Mrs. Clinton deleted or didn't want you to see. So uh, we had a major victory exposing that, and the court is uh, pressuring the State Department to release those more quickly than the email a day they want to take to release the 30 emails or so that are responsive. And, more, and, and uh, not most importantly, but it's important for us because this is a great book, Exposing Our Government Secrets and Lies, Clean House, it's being released today, big news. Uh, Great background on the Clinton email matter, great background on the IRS, Benghazi, Obamacare, including like Obamacare corruption in the Republican Congress. That's a great chapter and the way forward and why we need to clean house in Washington, D.C. and why whoever comes into office needs to take all of this very seriously. So appreciate your patience and your uh, following with us today uh, on this special report. Uh, there's more coming. There are more documents we're getting as we speak and reviewing that will probably knock your socks off, so stay tuned. Uh, we'll be getting more material out, so I may even be back tomorrow or Thursday with another update on some new material we have. So stay tuned, and thanks for joining us here on Facebook Live with Judicial Watch. Uh, signing off, Tom Fitton.